Welcome! This is section 5.6, Inequalities in One Triangle. Our objective is to use inequalities involving angles and sides of triangles. So there are a couple of basic things. Ordering sides and angles. Across from the largest angle is the largest side. I'm actually going to change that and write longest. Across from the smallest angle is the shortest side. And similarly, across from the shortest side is the smallest angle. And across from the longest side is the largest angle. So, ordering sides of each triangle from shortest to longest. So I'm going to do small, medium, large. Now, what we have to do is find the smallest angle. So angle V is the smallest at 30 degrees. The side opposite that is going to be the smallest side. So that side is segment TU. Then we are looking for the medium angle, which is this. So UV is going to be the medium length side. And because 110 is the biggest angle, the side opposite that, TV, is the biggest. And even if we don't have a triangle, we can draw one. R, S, T. <clears throat> if R is 85, S is 25, and T is 70, it often helps to do this. Small, medium, large. The smallest angle is 25 degrees, so opposite that is RT. The medium angle would be 70 degrees, which is SR. And the largest would be ST. Now how can we put these sides in order from shortest to longest? So if you notice, we have two angles here. We can figure out angle T, so 58 plus 62 plus angle T has to equal 180 because the angles of a triangle add up to 180. So if we, uh, 58 plus 62 would be 120 plus angle T equals 180, which means angle T is 60 degrees. So shortest the shortest side is opposite this so TV is the shortest the medium side would be across from here so this is UV and the longest side is TU and now we're going to go the other way name the largest and smallest angle in each triangle so to find the largest angle we have to find I'm sorry, to find the largest angle, we have to find the largest side. So 18, 23, 35, this is the largest side, which means across from that, angle Y is the largest. And the smallest angle, we have to find the smallest side, which is 18. And across from that, angle W is the smallest angle. And Again, drawing a picture is sometimes very helpful. G, F, E. So we have F, E is 31, G, E is 27, and G, F is 22. We want the largest side. I'm sorry, the largest um, angle. So we're going to find the largest side, which is this one. And go across, so that's angle G is the largest. And the smallest we have to find the smallest side, which is 22, and go opposite that, which is angle B. E. Now, a town park is triangular. A landscape architect wants to place a bench at the corner with the largest angle. Which two streets form the corner with the largest angle? So, we have to find the largest side. And this is the largest side. So, that is the largest angle. And the two streets that form that angle are Martin Luther King Boulevard and Valley Road.
Now here we're going to determine which segment is the shortest in each diagram. So if this is 30 degrees, we can um, this angle, this side, is shorter. So I'm going to call this triangle 1 and this triangle 2. So I'm going to do small, medium, large, small, medium, large. Now if this is 30 degrees, because this is an isosceles triangle, that means each of these are going to be 75. So in this triangle, OR is the small side. And these two are tied, PO and PR. But in this other triangle, if this is 40 degrees up here, this angle here is 50. And so the smallest angle, smallest angle is 40 degrees, which means that RS is going to be the smallest side, and OR is going to be the medium side, and the largest side is going to be QS, or OS. I guess that's a Q, I'm sorry. And what we notice here is that QR is in both of them. But QR is the medium side. <clears throat> QR is the medium side for side for triangle number two, which means RS is smaller than QR. So the smallest side is RS. We're going to do the same thing here. Triangle one, triangle two, small, medium, large. So if that is 110 degrees, we can figure out that third angle. So we subtract 110 from 180, and also 32, and that means this angle is 38. So this is the smallest angle. So that means CD is the small side for triangle 1. The medium side would be DB or BD. I'll go in alphabetical order. And then the largest side is BC. Then for triangle 2, to find that third angle, we subtract 114 from 180, and then 30 again, and that gives us 36. So the smallest side here is BD. And then the medium side is going to be AB, and the largest side is AD. So again, we look to see what's in both of them. Here, BD is in both of them. So BD is the middle side length for triangle 1, but it's the smallest side length for triangle 2. So if BD is the middle, that means CD is smaller than BD. So CD is the smallest side. And we're going to do the same thing here. So here we have 180. We're going to subtract 48 and minus 47, and this is 85 degrees. And we can find that other angle, minus 95, minus 40, this angle is going to be 45 degrees. So triangle 1, triangle 2. Small, medium, large, small, medium, large. So for triangle 1, the smallest side is going to be XY, the medium side is WY, and the largest side is WX. And for triangle 2, the smallest side is WY, medium side is YZ, and the largest side is WZ. So again, we're trying to find out what's in both of them. So. WY is the smallest triangle for triangle 2, but it's the medium tri side for triangle 1, which means XY is smaller than that, so XY is the smallest side. And that brings us to this theorem, the triangle inequality theorem, which says the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than, greater than the length of the third side. So if we have a triangle ABC, then 
AB plus BC has to be greater than AC. And we can continue that on. BC plus AC has to be greater than AB. And AC plus AB has to be greater than BC. So how does this work? We're going to determine if these three numbers can be the measures of the size of a triangle. So we have 12, 6, and 7. So what I like to do is take the two smallest sides. Because 12 is already the biggest side. 12 plus 6 is obviously going to be greater than 7. But let's work through this. 12 plus 6 has to be greater than 7. That checks out. 12, I'm sorry. Let's do this. 6 plus 7, is that greater than 12? 6 plus 7 is in fact greater than 12 because that's 13, which is greater than 12. And similarly, 12 plus 7 has to be greater than 6. So this is 19 is greater than 6, so that works out. So yes, these will work. But when we look at number 8, if we do 8 plus 12, what is that in reference to 20? 8 plus 12 is 20. And that equals, so 20 equals 20. So these sides cannot be a triangle because they equal the third side. And we can do the same thing here. So here, I'm going to take my two small sides, 4 plus 6. What are they in reference to 12? That is 10, which is less than 12, so not a triangle. And finally, if I do 8 plus 3, what is that in reference to 9? That gives me 11. 11 is greater than 9, so that works. And we can move this around. So you can do 9 plus 3 in reference to 8. So that would be 12, and that is greater than 8. And so they all work. And obviously, 8 plus 9, 3, that would give us 17 is greater than 3. So this works. Yes, this is a triangle. Now, two sides of a triangle have the following measures. Find the range of possible measures for the third side. So we have two options, okay? If we have a side x, we have option 1 and option 2. x could be, we, I'm sorry, x, it's possible for 26 to be the biggest side. In that case, x plus 22 is greater than 26. So we can solve this. x has to be greater than 4. The other possibility is x is the biggest, in which case 22 plus 26 has to be greater than x, which would give us 48 is greater than x. So x is less than 48, but it is greater than 4. Again, we have two more sides. I'm going to add this one. So it's possible, and this one is interesting, because we would have x could be the smaller side. So 25 plus x has to be greater than 25, in which case x is going to be greater than 0. And the other possibility is when x is, x is the biggest, so 25 plus 25 would have to be greater than x. So we can rewrite this. x has to be less than 50, but also greater than 0. And we can continue on here. x plus 15 would have to be greater than 28. That's our first possibility. Our second one is x is the biggest. So 15 plus 28 has to be greater than x. 
So we can subtract 15 from both sides, so x is greater than 13. And here, 15 plus 28 is 43, which is greater than x. So x is less than 43, but it's greater than 13. And that is the range of possible measures. And one last one. 25 could be the biggest. So x plus 17 would be greater than 25. 25 minus 17 is 8. So x is greater than 8. The other possibility is that x is the biggest. I wrote the wrong number down. So 25 plus 17 could be equal to x. Greater than x, I'm sorry. 25 plus 17 is 42. So x has to be less than 42, but greater than 8. And that's what we got. So please try some of the practice problems that I'll be posting. And have a great day. I'll catch you next time.